So in this video, you'll learn how to turn YouTube videos and actually any videos into a podcast with these five easy steps. And we're starting right now. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to Next Level Video Marketing, a channel where you get the latest strategies and tips to help you achieve your marketing and business goals through video. Now remember, if this is your first time on this channel and you wanna get the latest strategies to help you maximize the impact of your marketing videos, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Turning YouTube videos or any video into a podcast can help reach a broader audience and extend the life of your content. So let's get started. So for the first step, you want to extract the audio from your video. So I'm here in Final Cut Pro, but you can use any video editor that you're more comfortable with, whether it's Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, iMovie, Filmora, or so on. So you can extract your audio as is and use that as a podcast. But what I like to do is edit the video a little bit more so the audio fits a podcast format. For example, I have the intro. In this video, you learn how to refer. That obviously doesn't work in a podcast setting. I want to remove this entire piece or edit that piece so you won't hear the in this video you'll learn. So what I'm going to do is probably extract this piece right here. I delete that section. And then I also would probably delete this next section where I say, Hello, welcome to Next Level Video Marketing, a channel where you get the latest strategies and tips to help you maximize your business and marketing goals through video. And I'll probably scrub the rest of this video to see if I mention anything more related to YouTube that won't fit in a podcast format. In particular, any references to cards or even at the end here where I say the ways to promote, share and distribute your video, which you can watch up here as well as this playlist here. So I'd probably delete that section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video. This would be the audio that I'd like to extract. So the next step here would be to export just the audio portion of this video. And that's it. So once you've extracted the audio, you'll want to move it into an audio editor for additional edits. So for me, I use Audacity, but you can use GarageBand or any audio editor that you like. So I'm going to open the file. And here's your extracted audio ready to be turned into a podcast. So for step number three, this is where you can add a pre-recorded intro or outro. If you want something different for your podcast than what you have on your YouTube videos. For me, uh, because I've edited most of the uh, video already, my audio is ready to be published as a podcast. But for some people, they can they want to add additional uh, intros and outros. To show you how to add an intro and outro in Audacity, what I did is I created a podcast intro and outro from uh, our original video. And what I'll do is just Command A to select the entire intro, Command C to copy. I'll just add that section to the beginning. And then the same thing if I wanted to add an outro. And then I would just go to the end here. So now I have a podcast intro and a podcast outro that I've attached to my audio. So for step four, I like to compress the audio and remove any background noise. So you want to compress the audio to smooth out the vocals so you don't have these high pitches or low inaudibles, pretty much everything is level. And removing background noise is optional, but where I record, there is a slight little hum that I like to remove, and I'll show you how to do that. So both compressing your audio and removing background noises can easily be done in your video editor, but if you haven't done it or want to do a little bit extra, you can also do it in Audacity. I need to select the tracks, so effects, compressor, most of the time, I usually just edit the threshold and the ratio. The attack time, the release times, I keep as is. So why adjust the threshold is I just want to smooth out anything that goes over uh, 18 or whatever the dB that you want to set. If you've done your audio correctly, your dB should be anywhere between negative 6 and negative 12. You just want to add an additional negative 6 dBs on top of that and I just want to round it off. For ratio, this is your dynamic range. The rule that I've, I've learned is anywhere between 3.5 and below. So I usually keep it to, to around 3.1, anywhere between 2.8 to 3.1, we compress that. And now you can see your audio is compressed. So the next step is to remove any background noises. So I just want to expand my audio a bit. 
What you want to do is find sections where you're not speaking. This is going to be difficult for this video because I have background music. So what I can show you is you can actually treat that music as background noise and actually remove it. So I'm going to say, let's take this section here and what I'll do is go to effects and noise reduction. And I'm going to get that noise profile. Let's say you didn't have any background music and you had like, let's say a hum. What you want to do is find that hum, find a clip of that hum. It doesn't have to be very long. It could be less than a second. And then once Audacity has that noise profile, you go into noise reduction again. And then in that selection, it'll remove that noise profile. So it actually did a pretty decent job of removing the background music, but it does a much better job for any consistent hums. So what you want to do is select the entire clip, go back to noise reduction, and then now this is where you want to remove the entire track. Because we have background music, it kind of throws it off and it does a much better job with a consistent sound rather than sound that obviously is changing with music. So you can hear some music, some sections with music and subsections without because it's actually trying to find the exact sound. If you wanted to get rid of some background music that you're finding from your audio, this is one of the best ways to do it. I've actually done in the past where I have extracted the audio from video put it into Audacity just for this feature. So the audio for my video is now ready to be published as a podcast. So I'm going to extract it uh, as an MP3. I'm gonna save it in the same file folder, but this time it's a podcast. And then I can add any of the meta descriptions here, but I won't for this purpose. So once you're ready to publish your podcast, you obviously need to publish it on a podcasting hosting platform. I've used Libsyn for the past um, eight to nine years. Any of the podcasts I've created, I'm used to it, used to the stats and everything. But another a platform that you can use is Anchor. I've just started to play around with it. For anyone who's just starting a podcast, it's probably one of the easiest ways to upload and then distribute your podcast to the different platforms like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and so on. So Anchor does a pretty good job of setting you up for all these channels if you have a brand new podcast, but I'm pretty used to the manual way. So if I'm creating a brand new podcast and I want to submit it to all these different channels, I want to make sure there's at least one, preferably three, because you'll want more than one for people to listen. Take the RSS, submit it to the various platforms. And because I've already been approved and have multiple podcasts in those various platforms, uh, it's pretty easy for me to do. But for brand new podcasts, it's gonna take maybe a couple days to a week for some of the platforms to approve you. Quickly, how I would create a brand new podcast on Libsyn, I would just add a new episode and then I would fill in the details, the name of the, the, the episode, the description, um, tags, keywords, and so on. And any artwork that I have, I usually add the same artwork to the channel if I want to schedule it and upload the actual media file into a Libsyn, which I'm not going to do, but you can. And once that's done, then you hit publish. And once you've been approved in all these different channels, the moment you hit publish within 30 minutes to an hour, um, your podcast will then be published to all the various channels. So there's actually one extra step I do before publish the audio file to a podcast. I actually inject it. I use ID3 editor because I want to inject some meta um, data into the podcast itself. Now you can probably do this with Libsyn, but I find ID3 editor much better. And you want to inject it with certain data points. What I find it does help with your podcast being found on different channels. So for example, let's take that audio here. Again, name, title, album, fill out this information. But I do want to enable the podcast tag, enable the feed in the description. And then you can even upload your artwork here. Because once you've uploaded your podcast into the feed, there's opportunities for it to go to multiple places. And as long as you have some metadata attached to it, better opportunities for people to find your podcast. So I have one bonus tip for you, and that's to turn your podcast into a micro podcast that then you can share on your various social channels and some social channels have a difficult time sharing audio and that's why i create these micro audios uh, that i can share simply create a new project we're going to upload the audio 
and we can create a template to share it on Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, or even as a story. So I'm just going to start with a blank template. If you already have your podcast art, you can replace it, or you can even use your brand image. So let's say if I wanted to use the next level marketing logo, I just fit it into the and then I can change the colors to whatever brand colors you want. And then on top of that, you can add subtitles. Um, you can auto subtitle or add the subtitles of the various sections. You could either put your entire podcast here, but what I recommend doing is taking a highlight clip of your podcast. So anywhere probably under two minutes and then share that and then drive people back to the full podcast. And once you add subtitles, then you can also add different elements like sound waves, progress bars, and so on. And they've already added the sound wave here. I want to make it a little wider. I kind of like the waves and then, then I can add a subtitle if I want to. So that's essentially it. I'm going to move this out. So as you can see, I've got a, the captions ready. And then there you've created a micro podcast from your uh, initial video. And then all I'll do is export it. Usually what I do is share the video itself, but if you prefer to share the audio version, then this is one way to do it. Turning your videos into a podcast is just one way to repurpose them. If you want to learn more, check out this playlist here, or watch this playlist to learn more video marketing tips and strategies. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.